George Mount, Artistic Director of Seattle Shakespeare Company. Hi, I'm Rosa Josie. I'm the director of Bring Down the House and a co-founder of Upstart Crow Collective. So about 10 years ago, actually now, uh, I was asked to design a poster for a production of a King John that uh, several friends of mine were uh, acting in, and I thought, sure, why not? I'm happy to do that. Uh, I didn't really know much about the project. I just knew that all the pe people involved were extremely talented. And when I got to see the show, it was an all-female production uh, directed by Rosa Joshi, who I, I didn't know at the time, but I had actually seen some of her work decades earlier at New City Theater, and I was blown away. I thought it was the most expansive, yet uh, personal, specific, political, exciting, and dynamic production of a rarely produced Shakespeare play, uh, and I was uh, enamored of uh, the process, the production, and the people involved. Later they did a production, uh, about six years later, of Titus Andronicus, uh, and again, I was gobsmacked. And I knew this was someone I had to work with, and I wanted to be able to uh, collaborate with. So I hired you to direct Richard, Richard II. II that I was in, and it was one of my all-time favorite performing experiences. I learned so much playing that role. Um, yours is a voice that I just feel needs to be heard out in the uh, Seattle theater community, and eventually you approached me about a production uh, of an amalgam of the Henry VI plays that you and Upstart Crow, your theater collective, uh, who put on the King John and the Titus plays, wanted to produce, but might not have all the resources available to put on such an ambitious project. And when Rosa comes knocking, the door gets swung wide open. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, so I've always loved the history plays because I think the history plays are political, but they're also about families, and they're intensely personal, and, and they're about political dynasties. To me, the history plays, and especially Henry VI, it's Game of Thrones, you know? I mean, in Game of Thrones, it, it, there are the Starks and the Lannisters. And in the Henry VI, um, often known as the War of the Roses, uh, it's the Yorks and the Lancasters. Sound a little similar? <laughs> um, and so, of course, to research doing this adaptation, I felt like I had to watch all of Game of Thrones just to make sure that I was up to speed. <laughs> um, but, but that is what attracts me to the place, because it seems like, oh, what has this medieval English history to do with us exactly. as a contemporary American audience? And I think it has a lot to do with us, because I think it, it's, it's about... The War of the Roses is about deep divisions within a society, and two political factions who have it out for each and other. And airing those grievances. And airing those grievances. On a grand national scale. In a way that affects the common person. And the, that it, basically at the center of this play is a massive civil war that is fought for personal political reasons that impacts the larger public, right? So that makes me think of current American politics. And I think of a deeply divided society, and I think of politicians who have deeply personal ambitions. Mm. And, but then beyond that, woven into the play are mothers and sons, fathers and sons, brothers, and how their personal uh, rivalries play into this political warfare. So despite all the English history stuff in it, it's still a deeply personal, deeply identifiable, and deeply human story. That's what drives it, right? That's what has to drive it, because I'm, I, I love the history of it, right? And I can geek out on the history <laughs> of it. But to me, we, we research the history, and then we leave that, and we deal with the text. And In the same way that Shakespeare story. did. Yes. Shakespeare re plays havoc with English history, right, to get to the what's really dramatic mm. in the in the pieces. And so I love, you know, Game of Thrones is, is an inspiration. House of Cards is an inspiration. The way that people... You've had a lot of other... So the inspirations stylistically, too, are coming from a lot of different places. So stylistically, the inspiration is that is um, very abstract theatrical. I mean, it's a very simple set, but it's going to be highly theatrical. And then we're incorporating drumming. We're incorporating a kind of drumming um, called taiko, which is a Japanese form of drumming that is very martial. Mm -hmm. And so 
with an all-female cast, I wanted something that would en encompass the power of the female body. Yeah, it's very deep, loud, rumbling, oh, and, and uh, there is energetic nothing, style. Uh, there is nothing more cathartic than being in a, in a room of like a dozen women drumming. You know, we will have two drums on the stage because otherwise we would deafen the audience. <laughs> I did a sound test and it was, it's loud. Yeah, we've been, wor you've been working on how to put this together for quite some time with this. One of the, it's uh, also a new thing for us at Seattle Shakespeare Company. We've helped invest in this project from the conception point of view through uh, some workshops and readings and you did, you've, you've we, been doing several workshops and developments. We did a few readings, one that was sponsored by Seattle Shakes, which was really fantastic. And then we did a workshop also where we explored the idea of Tycho drumming to see whether it would really work in the play. And that's where a lot of the vocabulary for how we were going to stage it hmm. came came into being. And the, the staging is very, ex it's the thing that excites me. I mean, the storytelling, all of it excites me, but the way that we are going to stage this with tables and chairs and make it really highly theatrical, mm -hmm. that, I think, is something that is new for me, so it's exciting, <laughs> because I, I, it's a challenge, and that, you know, artistically, you always want to challenge yourself yeah. and stretch yourself. The biggest stuff you can do. Absolutely. Um, but the... The um, so we had the chance to explore the drumming, and then also the actors have been in uh, taiko lessons this fall. It was I offered them free taiko lessons to come, and so I've been joking because you know when men prepare to go to do a, a war film and they go to boot camp, mm -hmm. we've been in taiko boot camp. Taiko boot camp. So the women have been training, and their arms are hurting. <laughs> They're going to be so buff by the time we open the show. And so we've been doing that for the past month on Saturdays, um, preparing. And they're ready. And so a little thing about the title also is that, you know, it's the House of York, the House of Lancaster. So uh, the War of the Roses. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for a great title, and there is a... Uh, it's sometimes called the War of the Roses. There's also the Rose Rage, which one company did, mm -hmm. which I thought was really great. And so I th was thinking about it, and I thought, bring down the house because of the the two houses, but also the idea that a bunch of women were going to get on stage, and they are going to bring down <laughs> the house. So Well, I'm excited for it as well. It's an ambitious project for Seattle Shakespeare Company, and a first for us. We've never done uh, any of the Henry Sixes, uh, and so we get to uh, explore those great texts and put them on our stages, and we get to uh, collaborate with the outstanding Upstart Crow Collective and the amazing opportunity for uh, some of the great female actors in our, our city, which is just rich with talented uh, actors and actresses, so often shut out of the Shakespeare canon because... There's just not a lot of roles for women uh, until opportunities like this are come along. Absolutely, it's one of the it's one of it's become a personal mission of mine to create more opportunities for women, especially women who want to do classical work because it doesn't exist. And yeah, you're right. There are some incredible. There not some. There are so, so many, many incredible female actors who have incredible classical chops, mm -hmm. and they deserve time on stage, and they deserve the opportunity to be able to work with each other, which is so rare, right? Yeah. I mean, you guys, you get to work with each other all the time, <laughs> I just want to say. I just want to say that. And so for me also, the idea of taking a history play that is often a showcase for a whole lot of men on stage and to have 17 women on stage, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I do have to... Th think that I've just won the artistic lottery, <laughs> right? Like, I get to do the Henry Six plays in two-part rotating rep with 17 women at Seattle Shakespeare Company. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> well, we hope you'll enjoy it. Come see. Yes.